What's up, nerds? How are you today? Today's topic is control systems of your body, the amazing physiology, how your body stays alive. So, let's get started. But first, let's get this example. You have your thyroid gland taking orders from the pituitary gland to secrete thyroid hormone in the bloodstream. If there is an excess amount of thyroid hormone in the bloodstream, it will produce something we call negative feedback. It will tell the thyroid, stop what you're doing, we already have enough. And it will tell the pituitary, this is your pituitary, not your testicles, please stop producing TSH to stimulate this thyroid hormone production, we already have enough. Your body has thousands of control systems. Your body is a control freak. They keep your body alive. A significant change in your internal environment, also known as the extracellular fluid, can lead to your death. Life needs balance. Life is only possible within a narrow range. If, for instance, your body temperature, a change of greater than 7 degrees Celsius or 11 degrees Fahrenheit can literally put you to death. If you don't get it, let's get an example. Regulation of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the extracellular fluid. Here is your blood vessel. It has red blood cells and they have hemoglobin. Hemoglobin carries oxygen. Oxygen is given to the tissue. But when the oxygen in the tissue is very abundant, they will tell the hemoglobin, thank you, we have enough oxygen. So the oxygen stops flowing from hemoglobin to the cell because hemoglobin has a high affinity to oxygen. It really loves oxygen too much. But on the other hand, if you have lots of carbon dioxide in the tissue, the cells will handle them to the hemoglobin. Please take care of this carbon dioxide and it will carry it to the lungs. Your lungs will exhale the carbon dioxide out. Okay, when the CO2 is like abundant in your blood, the brainstem is stimulated. So you will breathe rapidly and deeply to get rid of this CO2. Very cool. By the way, this is called oxygen buffering function of hemoglobin, which is indeed astonishing. Now let's turn our attention to the story of your blood pressure regulation. Let's suppose that you are having increase of your blood pressure. This will stretch your arteries. In your arterial walls, especially the aortic arch and the bifurcation of the carotid artery, you have some stuff called baroreceptors. So receptors are easy to understand. Okay, what about baro? You remember in physics the Barometer, okay, pressure meter. So barrow means pressure. They sense pressure. So when you stretch these arteries, they will sense this pressure. They will give nerve impulses to the medulla of your brainstem. This nerve impulses or this vasomotor center will respond by dilating your blood vessels and decreasing the pumping activity of your heart, which will lead to decrease your blood pressure and back to normal. Very well done. On the other hand, if you have low blood pressure, stretches of the arterial wall will decrease, which will lead to less stimulation of baroreceptors, loss of inhibition of the vasomotor center, loss of inhibition equals kind of stimulation. So, will lead to constriction of your blood vessels and increase pumping activity of your heart. They will raise your blood pressure and back to normal. Amazing! To get an idea about the tight regulation, take calcium for example. Very low calcium and you get tetanic convulsions. Very high calcium and your heart will stop. Potassium, very high potassium, your heart suffers. Very low potassium can lead to like muscle problems or also like heart problems. Glucose, low glucose, seizure. High glucose, you can end up in coma, such as in hyperosmolar non-ketotic coma 
and stuff like that, also diabetic ketoacidosis. The concept of negative feedback is truly amazing. So, high carbon dioxide, you will breathe rapidly and deeply in response. This is called hyperventilation. This will lead to exhaling CO2 and reducing its amount back to normal. Why is this negative feedback? Because the result is opposite to the initiating stimulus. This is called negative. The increased CO2 started the events that will lead to its reduction. This is called negative feedback. On the other hand, low CO2, you will breathe slowly called hypoventilation to make the CO2 build up. This is also negative feedback. Hey, but wait, this CO2 is increasing. Yes, still negative because the result is opposite to the initiating stimulus. So we call this negative feedback. Negative feedback is cool, but positive feedback sometimes can lead to death. Oh, really? Yes. Normally you have 5 liters being pumped by your blood in every minute. Let's say that you are an idiot texting while crossing the street and you got hit by a car and you bled 2 liters of blood. Your heart will pump 3 liters instead of 5 per minute, which will lead to less blood going to the coronary arteries which feed the heart itself. This will lead to decreased pumping activity of the heart, the heart pumps less blood, less blood goes to the coronaries, and you are in a vicious cycle until you die. Okay, stop texting while crossing the street. But on the other hand, if you let only 1 liter, okay, negative feedback will happen. Yes, your heart will pump less blood, but this negative feedback will kick in to override the positive feedback and you can live. So positive feedback in the first example can lead to death. So you're saying that positive feedback is always bad? No, 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 no. It can be beneficial. For instance, when you bleed, activation of the clotting cascade will lead to activation of other enzymes in the adjacent vessels. The activate the cascade activate the cascade of other tissues, activate the cascade, and you stop bleeding. Also, in uterine contractions during child labor, the mommy pushes the baby, okay? These are called uterine contractions. They push the baby to the cervix. Stretch of the cervix will lead to more contractions. More contractions, more pushing, more contractions, more pushing, more dilation of the cervix, more contractions, and so forth. This is called a positive feedback, and it has a very beneficial result. The baby is born. Woohoo! That's it for today. In the next video, we'll talk about the human cell. So don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Facebook. I have 101 questions on Facebook until the end of this year. Also, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and don't forget to support me on Patreon. And thank you so much for watching. This is Medicos Perfectionalis. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard.